Hello there and welcome to this video on the BRK XR series of rifles. In our previous video we took a fully functioning and complete BRK Sniper XR and disassembled it into individual components. In this video we're going to be taking those individual components and rebuilding them into a fully functioning rifle. Now the rifle we're working on today is a BRK Sniper XR, although the information given in this video will also be relevant to the other models. All the XR models share the same main block, it's just the stock options, the barrel options and the bottle options which are slightly different between the models. We will however be bringing in these components when the reassembly process is significantly different. And whilst we're working on the Sniper XR, you should be able to follow along no matter what XR model you have. Another thing I want to mention is that this particular rifle is a 2.2 sub 12 pound rifle, although the information in this guide will also be relevant to the other calibers and also the FAC models. Another thing I will mention is that all the O-rings in this rifle have been replaced off camera. If you need any O-rings for your XR rifle, please contact Brocock Direct and they'll be happy to supply you with a full and complete O-ring kit for the rifle. And lastly, before we begin, on your screen now will be a complete list of all the tools that we're going to use in order to reassemble the rifle. It includes all the Allen key sizes, all the spanner sizes, and finally any BRK specific tooling required to complete the job. With that said, we can begin on the main block. The first thing we'll do is get the pallet probe and the cocking arm installed into the rifle. So I've got the components laid out here. The first thing we're going to do is add a small amount of grease to the pallet probe itself. We only want a light coating around the pellet probe and the grease I'm using is just some molly grease although you could also use lithium grease if you didn't have access to molly grease. So just a very very light coat. We'll also add a small amount to the pivot point of the cocking arm. With that greased we can put that in the back of the rifle. Just drop that into position like so and then we can get the hole in the back of the cocking arm lined up with a hole in the block. Nice and carefully. Then we can add our pivot point in. We'll get that done up using a 2mm Allen key. With that done we'll get the detent installed. So we have a ball bearing, a small spring and then a grub screw. So first of all we'll add the ball bearing and to that we're just going to add a small amount of molly grease. Getting that put in this hole here. Next up we'll add the spring, so that just goes over the ball bearing. Then we'll add the grub screw to cap it off. Again, doing the grub screw up with a 2mm Allen key. Just make sure that works. So the detent's working and I'm happy. The last thing to do is to add the cocking dog, this piece here. Now before this goes in we are going to add a small amount of blue Loctite to the threads just so it doesn't come loose under normal use. So just a small amount will do us, and then just give that a quick wipe around the threads. The next thing we have to do is fish the cocking dog through the block. So hopefully you can see that there, the camera might pick it up, but there's a hole in the bottom of the pellet probe, and the cocking dog needs to screw into that. Now it's a little tricky to get into position for the camera, so you just have to bear with me. But once we've got it in rough position, we can use a flat bladed screwdriver just to nudge it where it needs to go. Then we'll get that done up nice and tightly. And there we have it in the bottom there. The next thing we'll do is add the hammer, hammer spring and hammer spring adjuster to the block. So to begin with we'll take our hammer, locate this hole in the side of the hammer and get that lined up with this slot in the side. We'll get that pushed into place then we'll add a cheese headed screw, this one here, to the side of the hammer to secure it in place. We'll get that done up using a flat bladed screwdriver. Next thing we'll do is take our hammer spring adjuster, this piece here, and adjust the lock so it's just flush with the top of the unit there. This will just make it easy to put into place. Then we'll locate this hole in the side there and get that aligned with the back of the block. Up next we'll take our hammer spring adjuster, get that screwed into the front there 
and we'll just leave that roughly flush for now as we'll be readjusting the power when the rifle's all built up. The next thing we can do is locate the bottom, which is denoted by these two screw holes here, and get that pushed into position, like so. The next thing we'll do, we'll add the two securing screws. So on this rifle, as it is a sub 12 pound rifle, it does have one anti-temper screw and one normal Allen headed bolt. The FAC and international models will just have two Allen headed bolts. Then we can get the AT bolt screwed into the other side. So we'll get that screwed in by hand first, then come through with our three pin tool and get that done up nice and tightly. The next thing we'll do is add the trigger sears to the block. So to begin with we'll flip the block on its end, then add the small brass cover piece to the back here. Next up we can take the rearward sear, add the spring to the back of it. You can add a small amount of grease in the sear just to hold the spring in place if you wish to do so. Then we can get that lined up, dropped over the brass cover. Then we need to get the hole in the side of the sear lined up with the hole in the side of the block. Once we have that, we can take a trigger pin and get that pushed into position. It may take a little bit of wiggling to get the pin into position, but once it's in position, it should go in nice and easily. Next up, we'll add this sear, so the second sear, and this one goes in this orientation with the spring at the front. This spring hooks into this counter bore in the front there, so just like so. And then on this rifle, we use this hole, so we're going to get the trigger sear lined up with this hole here. And finally we have the one at the front, so this one here, and on this rifle it uses this hole. Getting that into position, lining the hole up in the side of the trigger, then getting the pin pushed through. We can check that the trigger is working by cocking the rifle and then firing it. So that seems to be working. There's no binding or anything like that. And the trigger seems to be fully working. So that's the trigger installed. The next thing we'll do is rebuild the regulator. And this particular regulator is the one found on the bottle rifles. The cylinder rifles house a slightly different regulator, but we will be rebuilding that very shortly. And like I said in the intro, all of these O-rings here have been replaced off camera, but if you need a set of O-rings for your rifle, please contact BRK Direct, and they'll be happy to supply you with a full O-ring kit. With that said, we can begin. The first thing we'll do is have a look at the regulator piston, and you can see how the Belleville washers are stacked there. So we see they're cupped in pairs, with the first two being cupped towards the base of the piston there. With that said, we can add a small amount of silicon grease to all of the O-rings. Just a small amount will do us. We can wipe off the excess with our fingers. With that done, we can add the piston to the base of the regulator nice and carefully, like so. Then we can add our white sealing disc, this piece here. So we'll take a look at that. Take a look at the white sealing disc and if one side has a dimple, what you can do is flip the disc. So this side is flat, the other side has a dimple, so we're going to drop that in. Make sure so that's seated and take a look down it, make sure it hasn't flipped up the wrong way on you. This one looks good, so we're going to be calling that that. The next thing we'll do is add a small amount of silicon grease to the two O-rings on the adjuster screw. So just a small amount will do us, wiping off the excess with our fingers. Then we can add the adjuster screw to the top of the regulator. What we're going to be doing is doing this in until we feel the adjuster screw lightly touch the top of the piston. Then we'll back it out a couple turns. So there it is touched. Back it out about two turns. We can always fine adjust the regulator pressure when we've got the rifle built up. I will say at this point though, whilst the rifle is pressurised, you can only increase rig pressure, you can't decrease it without depressurising the rifle. If you try and adjust the rig pressure down whilst the rifle is pressurised, 
you will damage the white sealing disc that we installed a moment ago. With that done, we can put the safety screw in the very top. That's done just using a 2mm Allen key. With the regulator rebuilt, we can now rebuild the reg housing. The first thing we'll do is add the back cap for the valve return spring. And that just screws into this end here. We'll get that done up nice and tightly with a pair of snap ring pliers. Just in the corners there, just nipping it up tight. Up next we'll add the regulator itself. And to begin with we'll put a small amount of silicon grease around each of these three o-rings here. Just a small amount will do us, getting rid of the excess with our fingers. Next up, we'll add it to this hole here. Gently push it into the position, then get it screwed in. To get that done up nice and tight, I am going to be using the reg removal tool, although you could use a set of snap ring pliers if you didn't have the specific tool. Up next, we'll add the foster fitting. So to begin with, we'll add the one-way valve to the foster fitting, and before that goes in, we are just going to add a very small amount of silicon grease, this o-ring here and we can get that pushed in like so with the o-ring towards the back of the unit then we can add this back cap here now to get this done up tight i am going to have to hold this piece in my vise and then tighten this piece up using a pair of snap ring pliers so i'll do that very quickly off camera with that done up nice and tight we can now add the foster fitting to the base of the piece there so we'll get that screwed in by hand first, then doing it up nice and tightly with a set of snap ring pliers. Up next we can add the dust cap just so it doesn't get lost. Then we can go ahead and install the two gauges. The gauges have a dowty washer seal on the base of them, so just make sure that that gets installed when you install the gauges. The bottom gauge is for the bottle pressure and the top gauge is for the regulator pressure. The gauges are slightly different, with the Humor one needing to be at the top, and the Brocock branded one being aligned with the bottom. Get those done up nice and tightly with a 22mm spanner. The last thing we'll do is just add the bottle. So to begin with, we'll take our O-ring, this one here, add a small amount of silicon grease to it, Slide that over the threads like so, then we'll screw our bottle on. As you do this up, just make sure that the o-ring itself doesn't get pinched between the bottle and the regulator housing. So I'm quite happy there. The next thing we'll do is rebuild the regulator. Now this particular regulator is the one found on the cylinder rifles. And just to stop any possible confusion, your rifle will only ever have one regulator in it. It will have this one if your rifle uses a cylinder as the main air supply, or it will have the other one if your rifle uses a bottle as the main supply of air. And as I said in the intro, all the O-rings have been replaced off camera, but if you need an O-ring for your rifle, please contact BRK Direct, and they'll be happy to supply you with a full O-ring kit to suit your rifle. With that all said and done, we can take a look at the components. The first thing we'll take a look at is the reg piston itself and the Belleville stack. So as you can see there we have six Belleville washers cupped in pairs in alternating sets. With that observed we can add a small amount of silicon grease to the o-rings. Just a small amount will do us and we can wipe off the excess with our fingers. The next thing we'll do is get the piston installed into the base of the reg body. Nice and carefully like so. Up next we'll add the snap ring, so we'll get the snap ring in place, then use a set of snap ring pliers just to get the snap ring pushed into the groove. Once it's in there, just make sure it's actually seated by using a, an allen key or something similar, and there we have it. Up next we can add the white sealing disc, this piece here. Before this goes in, just take a quick look at the surface. On one side there may be a dent, on the other side it should be flat. If you have a dent on both sides, it's time to replace the actual puck itself. If you have a dent on just one side, you can go ahead and flip it so that the dent is facing the reg piston and then install that into the body. 
then just take a look. Make sure the puck hasn't flipped over on you, which R1 had. Right, that's up the right way now. With the puck in, we can now add a small amount of silicone grease to the O-ring on the end of the adjuster screw, and then get that screwed into the body. We're going to be doing that up with a flat bladed screwdriver. And before we do it up tight, we are going to get our set of calipers and just reset our reg adjuster screw to the measurement we took when we disassembled the rifle. So on our rifle, it was measuring about 2.6 millimeters. So we're just going to reset the adjuster screw to that. And there we have it. We've reset the regulator to 2.6 millimeters. What this will mean is that the reg pressure will be roughly the same as when we took it apart. With the cylinder regulator rebuilt, it's time to rebuild the cylinder assembly. To begin with, we'll start at the fill end. The first thing we'll do is add the one-way valve, which is this piece here. Before that goes in, we are just going to add a small amount of silicon grease to the urethane o-ring around the base. Then we'll get that dropped into position. Next thing we'll do is get that pushed into place. Then add the washer to the top of it. Then finally cap it off with this filter here. To begin with, we'll drop that into position. Then get it started with our fingers. Then come through with a flat bladed screwdriver to get it done up where it needs to be. Now these don't need to be done up tight. The head just needs to be flush with the surrounding aluminium. The next thing we'll do is add the gauge to the end. Before the gauge goes on, we are just going to make sure that we've got our doughty washer in place. With that in place, we can get the gauge screwed onto the end, then do that up using a 22mm spanner. Up next, we can add a small amount of silicon grease to both of these O-rings here. Just a small amount will do us, wiping off the excess with our fingers. We will also add some to these two o-rings here, like so. The next thing we'll do is get our cap pushed over the front there like so. Then we can get that screwed into the end of the cylinder. Now if we take a look at the cylinder, we have one end with a counter bore and the other end is just threads. This end goes towards the block and this end goes towards the fill end. So we're going to be putting it in like so. Then we can get that screwed in. We can then use the cap at the end here as a gauge. So the piece itself needs to be done in far enough so that we can still get our cap on with a small gap between the cap itself and the end of the cylinder. You can double check the placement by rotating the hole, lining the hole up with the fill port and making sure that it's perfectly aligned. At this stage, you could take your fill probe, put that in and just make sure that it's still aligned. For now though, that looks good to me, so we're going to be leaving it as is. The last thing we'll do is add the regulator. To do that, we're going to be adding a small amount of silicon grease to this O-ring around the back and this O-ring around the base here. Small amount will do us. We can then get that pushed into position. Nice and carefully. And then for now, we'll just get it seated towards the end of the threads. When we screw this piece onto the end, it will push the regulator into its final housing place, but we're not going to be screwing this on just yet, as this piece needs to be installed into the block before we screw the cylinder on. The next thing we'll do is add the valve seat, the valve pin, and the valve return spring to the block. To begin with, we'll take this O-ring here and just add a small amount of silicon grease to it. Then we'll get that put around the valve seat, like so. Then we'll come through with our valve removal tool, get it put onto the tool with the peak facing the end of the tool, then we can get that pushed into its seat. Here we have the valve seat in the block nice and securely. The next thing we'll do is take the valve pin and get that pushed into position using a set of tweezers. 
nice and carefully pushing it into position. Then we can take the valve spring and just drop that over the end there. There we have it, that's the valve and the valve seat installed into the block. The next thing we'll do is get the bottle and the reg housing screwed onto the main block. To begin with, we'll add a small amount of silicon grease to these two O-rings here. Just a small amount will do us. Next thing we'll do is make sure that these two grub screws here are wound out. If they're past flush at the front here, they may end up causing some damage to your front block when you screw this on. So just make sure they're nice and wound out. The next thing we'll do is add the regulator housing to the main block and get that screwed into position. Now the threads on the regulator housing are timed, so the rig housing and the main block should line up pretty much perfectly. As you can see there, once we're done up tight, the block is aligned with the main block. Once we're happy, we can take our 2.5mm ball-ended allen key and just do these two grub screws up nice and tightly. There we have it. So there's the regulator housing and the bottle installed onto the block. The next thing we're going to show you is how to install the cylinder onto the main block. Now to begin with, we'll take this piece here and just add a small amount of silicon grease to these two O-rings here. With that done, we can screw that into the main block. Getting that done up nice and tightly with an adjustable spanner. The threads themselves are timed, so the two flats on the end there should be aligned with the sides of the block. And if we take a look down here, just in this hole in the front, we should be able to see the outlines of a slot. I can see it, I'm not quite sure if the camera will pick it up or not. The next thing we have to do is install our small grub screw. We're going to be doing that with a 2mm allen key and just get that screwed into the front there. This is a locking grub screw so it will stop this piece here from being unwound in the future. With that done we can then take our cylinder and screw it onto the front. And there we have it. Both the long cylinder and the short cylinder are installed and are assembled in exactly the same way. We used the short one in the video just so it's a little easier to manipulate for the camera. Next thing we'll do is reassemble the safety and the trigger plate. Now this is normally something you never really need to take apart. However, we did so just so you could see what's involved. Now we'll say before we start, reassembling the safety is a little tricky on these rifles and it may be a little hard to show for the camera. So hopefully you can bear with me and we'll get it built back up. So to begin with, we'll take our safety flag, this piece here, drop that in this hole here, flip the block over and locate this hole in the bottom. We need to add the spring, so this spring here, and our ball bearing to the top of it. This is where the tricky part lies. If we take a look at the safety flag, we have a threaded hole in the side. What we need to do is get one of these grub screws in the side of that safety flag whilst compressing the spring and the ball bearing. So what we'll do is we'll get our grub screw preloaded onto our allen key. Then we need to compress the spring and the ball bearing into its hole, like so. And we're going to be holding that in place with a flat bladed screwdriver, just like so. The next thing we'll do is rotate the safety flag off to one side and then get the grub screw screwed into one side. And there we have it. And there we have it. So like I said, a little tricky to show for the camera, but what you have to do is depress the ball bearing and the spring into the hole then get the grub screw started, and then thread it in all the way. With that done, we can come through with the second grub screw and get that installed in the other side of the safety. So in this side here. Up next, we can take our trigger guard here, and if we put the safety into the middle position, we can drop that over like so, and then get the two securing screws installed. So one at the front, then one at the back, Getting those done up nice and tightly with a 3mm Allen key. 
The next thing we'll do is install the trigger guard and safety as well as the power adjuster into the main block. Before we do that though, I will just mention that the Atomic, Ranger and Concept rifles have a captive trigger guard in their aluminium stock. So just be aware, this would need to be installed as well as the trigger guard. With that said, we can install the power adjuster. And the first thing we're going to do is add a small amount of silicon grease to these two O-rings here. Once that's been done, we can take a look at the device and locate the two slots in the side of it. Now it has two, one long one, and then one short one. The short one is designated for the sub-12 pound rifles, and the long one is designated for the FAC rifles. If you get it round the wrong way, what you can end up doing is blocking off the transfer pole. So, as this is a sub-12 pound rifle, the short slot needs to be aligned with the bottom of the rifle. So it goes in the rifle like so. With that gently pushed in, we can add the small spring and the plunger to this hole in the bottom of the block. Just this one here. If we take a look at the plunger, it has two ends. One end with a small spigot that captures the spring. The other with a small nub on the end to act as a detent. With that in position, we can add the trigger guard and safety to the front there, then get that secured using the four screws, getting those done up nice and tightly with a two and a half mil Allen key. Before you do those up tight, just make sure the trigger guard is not impeding the trigger at all. So we're quite happy there. And whilst you're there, just make sure the trigger guard itself is aligned nicely with a block. Whilst we're here, we will also check the detent on the power adjuster. So that feels good. For the sub 12 pound rifles, there should be three detents. So one in the low position, one in the medium position, and then one in the higher position. Next thing we'll do is install the barrel. To begin with, we'll take a small amount of silicon grease and just add that to these two O-rings here. Once we've got a bit round them, we'll line the two dimples up with the top of the block, like so, and then we'll get the barrel pushed into position. If we take a look at the barrel here, you can see that there's a small amount protruding that captures the magazine. However, the main shank of the barrel should be flush with a block. Then we can double check the position by looking in the top here and making sure that the two dimples in the top of the barrel line up with the grub screw holes. Once we're happy, we can get the two grub screws installed. Then get those done up with a two and a half mil Allen key. Once we've got the grub screws done up nice and tight, we can check that the barrel's in the right position by installing either a single shot loader or a magazine. So the single shot loader goes in nice and easily without resistance, so I'm confident the barrel's in the correct position. Up next, we can get the shroud installed. To begin with, we'll add the shroud back carrier to the barrel, simply by sliding it over then getting it aligned with the block. It has two flats, one on either side, and they need to be aligned with the sides of the block like so. Now the shroud back carrier doesn't want to be touching the block. There wants to be sort of the width of a piece of paper gap between the block and the back of the shroud. So just make sure you've got a little bit of a gap there. And then once we've got it in rough alignment, we can get the two grub screws done up with a two and a half mil Allen key. Once you've got one done up, you can check your alignment, and once you're happy, you can do the other one up. So I'm happy there. There's a small gap, and the flats are lined with the side of the block. Up next, we'll install the front shroud carrier, so this piece here. To begin with, we'll add a small amount of silicon grease to this O-ring here, and then to the barrel, we will just add a small amount of blue Loctite. This will just stop the shroud carrier from coming off if we undo the shroud at any point. 
and we can get that done up nice and tight with the use of a pair of snap ring pliers. With that done, we can slide the shroud over, then screw it into the back cap. As you do the shroud up, just make sure that the o-ring in the back here doesn't get pinched between the carrier and the shroud body. But there we have it. There's the rifle pretty much fully complete. The next step is to pressurise the rifle, so I'll get the rifle pressurised and I'll bring you back when we're adjusting the regulator. Right then, so I've got the rifle pressurised up. If we take a look at the side there, you can see we've got about 160 bar, 170 bar in the bottle. If we take a look at our reg pressure, it's sitting around the 70 bar mark, so we do need to increase that very slightly. So to increase reg pressure, we need to turn the reg adjuster screw counterclockwise. So we'll do that very quickly. We'll just take small adjustments and keep checking the reg pressure in between the adjustments. Once we're close, like we are now, we'll take a few dry fires in a nice safe direction, then we'll double check what the reg's set to. And after a little bit of adjustment, I'm quite happy with my current reg set pressure. So to my eye, it's just under the 90 bar mark, and I expect that will drop a couple of bar once we start shooting the rifle. Regulators tend to settle down after a few shots. The other thing that I want to mention is that you cannot adjust the reg pressure down whilst the rifle is pressurized. To reduce the reg pressure, you would need to completely degas the rifle, turn the adjuster screw in a couple turns, repressurize the rifle, then readjust your regulator R. If you adjust the reg pressure down whilst the rifle is pressurized, you will damage the white sealing disc that's present in the regulator. The last thing I'll do is show you how to adjust the power of the rifle. So we have the hammer spring adjuster at the back here, this one here, and to increase your power, you need to wind the hammer spring in slightly, and to decrease power, you need to wind it out slightly. Now this does have a lock on it, so once you get your power set, what you need to do is remove these two bolts here, take the back cap out, and then tighten the small grub screw that tightens onto the hammer spring adjuster, and that will lock it into position. So I'm going to get my power set very quickly off camera. I'm going to lock it. Then I'll bring you back and we'll put the action back in the store. Right then, so I've just adjusted the rifle over the chronograph and I'm happy that the rifle is shooting around the 11 and a half pound mark. So what we're going to do now is lock off the hammer spring adjustment. To begin with, we'll remove these two bolts. The first one, this one here, is removed using a 3mm Allen key. And the second one is an anti tamper bolt, so we need to use our 3-pin tool. With that done, we can force the hammer spring adjuster out the back, and then, whilst using this grub screw in the back here, we can lock it into position. So we're going to be doing that up with a 2.5mm Allen key. Now, if we come in the back and try and adjust our hammer spring, it's locked into position and it won't move. So with that done, we can get that installed into the back of the rifle again, installing the two securing screws. The next thing I'm going to do is just put another couple shots over the chrome graph just to make sure that no changes have been made to the hammer spring setting. So I've just put another mag of pellets through the rifle and it's still set at exactly 11 and a half. So the final thing we can do is install the stock. So we'll get the stock dropped over the action, then use our stock bolt going in through the bottom there, getting that done up with a 5mm Allen key. And there we have it. There's the rifle fully built up and all complete again. The final thing to do is to mark the gauge and make sure that we haven't got a leak. Now I've replaced all the o-rings so I'm pretty confident we haven't got a leak so I won't make you wait around for that. What I will say however is thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it's been useful and we'll see you in the next one.